you know, if you think about we're imaging water and and so water is present at a very high concentration, 55 molar. We need some way to affect that water in, in a big way. And I'll get into that in the ne next few slides, uh, how, how we can do this. Uh, it acts as a catalyst uh, and it modifies the, the water, uh, multiple waters, um, thousands, hundreds of thousands of waters in the course of the imaging exam. So in order to get relaxation to occur, in order to change the, the magnetic properties of, of water, the proton needs to encounter some sort of fluctuating magnetic field. And uh, the way that this happens in the absence of the contrast agent, uh, it's usually by other protons. So you have water that's just undergoing Brownian motion. It's moving around. It's booging around in, in the body. And this generates small fluctuating magnetic fields. And these small fluctuating fields act on other waters, and these undergo relaxation. Now, if we want to improve that, we can go from a proton to an electron. And an, an electron is about almost 700 times more potent as a local magnet than a proton. Hmm. And gadolinium, as an ion, has seven unpaired electrons. So now we're far and away better than, than other protons. So it's a very powerful effect. So we basically have seven times 700, so 5,000 times more powerful than than what you would do if you just had proteins running around. Exactly, exactly. And that's why we like gadolinium. Other ions like, say, copper have only one unpaired electron, so the effect with gadolinium is, is very potent. Got it. And then we talk about relaxivity, which we define as, as a lowercase r. Uh, and this is just a change in the, in the relaxation rate that we observe, 1 over T1. And then we normalize this to the concentration of gadolinium. So a higher relaxivity is something that's going to give a bigger T1 change. So how does that happen? Well, there's a, there's a lot of interesting physics going on. Maybe not so interesting to you, but... <laughs> so gadolinium, as I mentioned, is a very strong local magnet with those seven unpaired electrons. And as the gadolinium complex diffuses in solution, as it's just tumbling around in solution, a fluctuating magnetic field is created. So if it's diffusing back and forth, this creates a fluctuating magnetic field. And when that fluctuation is close to the hydrogen Larmor frequency, then we can get relaxation to occur. So we can transfer the energy from gadolinium to the water. I've shown the waters here as, as red, as a very tense kind of color. And when that occurs, the waters become blue and they're relaxed and very calm. Got it. Now, this relaxation effect depends on the, the distance between the gadolinium and the hydrogen as one over the sixth power. So we really want to get those waters close to the gadolinium as possible. And the way that contrast agents do this is there's a site where a water can actually come and bind directly to the gadolinium, and that's what I've shown here, uh, to make this distance close. And when that occurs, that water then undergoes relaxation. Now, that's only one water for gadolinium, but another great thing about gadolinium is this water only stays on the gadolinium for a very short time, for uh, under a microsecond. Hmm. And so that water molecule is relaxed. Another one comes in and takes its place. And then that gets relaxed. And this goes on at about a, over a million times per second. And so the net effect is that we one gadolinium ion can relax about a million water molecules in a second. And this, in turn, then uh, we can detect gadolinium at much, much lower concentrations than we're actually detecting water itself. I see. So that's why you called it catalytic. Uh, so this one, one, for each molecule of the gadolinium agent we put in, we get this sort of 10 to the sixth or more effect every second. That's right. This big amplification effect. Excellent. 